Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome once again to another night of soul searching from our from our daughters of God. So welcome to the prayer retreat ministry. This is our third day, third day from hearing from our daughters of God. So before we get into the presentation, let's bow our head for prayers. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, our divine Lord, your children has come to unite together as one, seeking wisdom from you to make the right decision in proclaiming the truth. Lord, we are reminded of challenges that we go through in, our, in this life but we must remain faithful. Oh, yes, Jesus does care. He sent his daughter, Sister Kezia, to present a message. Let the word, let the Lord be our guide. His word be our guide, who directs us into the right path. Sister Kezia is come so that she can present a message for such a time as this. Speak through her, Lord. Speak through your daughter. Anoint her with the holy oil. Give us all attentive ear that our hearts will be stirred. Hasten our brethren, dear Lord, so that they too will be blessed. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And welcome once again to all who has just joined. And before we get into the word, the Tutleys will give us a song. We'll open with a song. Thank you. Good evening. The song we're going to share is called In the Sanctuary. Oh, 
blotting out our sins in the sanctuary thank you thank you ladies thank you amen amen amen, amen. okay um now we're on day day are we on day two or day three day two day three we're on day three <laughs> um and before i introduce um our sister i just want to read um from daughters from the daughters of god it says, Christian women are called for. There is a wide field in which they may do good service for the master. They are noble women who have had moral courage to decide in favor of the truth from the weight of evidence. They have tact, perception, and good ability and could make successful Christian workers. So tonight I introduce you to Sister Kezia. Sister Kezia, the time is now yours. Thank you so much, Sister Aline. Thank you for such a beautiful quote that we as daughters of God, we've got a work to do in his vineyard. Um, good evening, everybody on the platform. I'm so thankful this evening that... Um, will be able to share God's word. And I'm thankful also for you to giving up your time. We know that this is midweek and uh, people are busy going to work and so forth. It's not always very easy to come in and, and join. So I really appreciate your presence to be together as we break the bread of life uh, this evening. Shall we pray? Thank you, Most Reverend. I will put a photo. Let us pray. Our Father, our Maker, the Creator of heavens and earth, the seas and the fountains of water, we come before Your presence this evening, Lord. As we, just as we are, 
You know each one of us, Lord. We are unworthy, so unworthy. But we know that you by no means cast out anyone who comes to you. Therefore, we we gladly come because we know that you want us to come to. We want us to come to you and present our burdens and everything, Lord, before you. Thank you that you are such a sympathizing savior and you are such a loving savior. This evening, Lord, as we sit, we want to listen the word from you. I have no, no words to speak to your people. But Lord, when we come together, you always have a word for us, a word of encouragement, especially in these days which we are living. Therefore, I present myself before you. Speak through me, Lord. Put your word in, in, on my mouth. May everything that I speak, Lord, come from, from you. You are the one who created speech. Lord, I pray that you will perfect the speech for me, Lord, as you are speaking to your people this evening. Anoint each one of us, Lord. Open our hearts so that we can hide this word in our hearts, Lord. Therefore, that we cannot sin against you when the word is, is hidden in our hearts. Thank you that we still have this privilege of coming to worship you, to study the word together. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen and amen. amen. For those who have just joined, uh, welcome and uh, good evening. Today we are going to uh, just do a brief study. Uh, I can actually just say amen because the uh, Tuckley Twins have already done uh, half of the work for me, the song which they were just singing in the sanctuary. We will, we, our topic today is afflicting our souls, but just as a, a refresher course, as a reminder, we just want to, to know what the sanctuary is for the sake of those who are not sure what the sanctuary is. Um, there are three components. I would like also us to interact. Um, there are three components in the in the sanctuary. Can anyone just tell us what the those components are? Anyone? The courtyard, the holy place, and the most holy place. Thank you, Sister Judith. The courtyard, which really represents the the earthly component because we know that there is there was the earthly the uh, type the, the type had everything here on earth but the actual the real uh, sanctuary is in heaven so the courtyard represents um the earthly ministry of Christ and in the courtyard you find the altar of in, of sacrifice and the liver in the holy place there are three items in the holy place. Uh, anyone to who can say those three items? This is really a refresher. It's you know, it's not my message. What are the three components in the holy place? Anyone can just mute and and uh, speak out. The there's the there's the menorah. There is the table of showbread. And there is the altar of incense. Thank you so much, Sister Stole. Yes, those three components. And then from there, we move into the holy, in, in the most holy place. Um, the most holy place. Anyone to, to share with us what's in the most holy place? The Ark of the Covenant. That's right, the Ark of the uh, Covenant. What is it, sister? What is in the Ark of the Covenant? The Ten Commandments and Aaron's rod, and also the manna, the bowl with the manna. That's right, and the and Holy the Law of God. Of Moses. That's right. Thank you so much. Um, so we are all familiar with this, and we know when Christ resurrected. He, he didn't go in the in the most holy place. He first went in the holy place. And since um, 
1844, as we all believe, a Seventh-day Adventist, he moved into the Holy of Holies. Since 1844, how many years are we down from 1844? That's about 100 and, 180 years. In actually, on the 22nd of October uh, this year, that will be exactly 180 years since the Lord is in the in the most holy place. For us to understand also um, what, what would take place in the sanctuary, we would need to go to the typical services which were being done by Moses when he was in the wilderness on the journey of liberating the children of Israel to Canaan, leading them to Canaan. If we open, um, because the Lord says in uh, Psalm 77 verse 13, if somebody can can open to us uh, Psalm 77 verse 30 and read that for us. Um, 77 verse 13. 27. Yes. Thy way, O Lord, O God, is in the sanctuary, who is great, a God of, as our God. Amen. Amen. Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. So, our salvation, everything that God has done is revealed to us. We cannot not know where we are, how far we are going, and what is happening, because he revealed that. This is why he said in... Um, in uh, Exodus 25, verse 8, somebody to open Exodus 25, verse 8. Exodus 25, verse 8. Yes. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Yes. So let them make me a sanctuary so that I may dwell among them. We are familiar with what was happening. If we read the book of uh, Leviticus, um, you will find that all the activities are actually all highlighted there. I would, I would recommend people to read that, that uh, whole chapter of Leviticus so that we are really, really grounded in the, in the sanctuary message because sanctuary is one of the pillars of the Seventh-day Adventist faith. It's one of the five pillars of, of our faith. Therefore, we need to be grounded. We need to be sure that this, we are sure of what is, what is happening. As I said, since 1844, um, Christ has been in the most holy place. That's when he moved into the most holy place. So we are living in the last days of this ex history. The world is ripe for harvest and everyone, Christian or non-Christian, can see that the events which are taking place are unprecedented. We have witnessed COVID-19 COVID epidemic, pandemic, sorry, and the complete shutdown of everything in the whole world. We can hear, we know about the wars which are going on, earthquakes, um, fires in diverse places. We hear about wars. We know that um, uh, Syria has been at war for such a long time. Ukraine and Russia, Gaza and, and Israel, the war is going on right now. And we know that rumors of war just recently, I think it's about just a week ago, when um when 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 NATO announced that they were going to put missiles in, in Germany. And obviously uh, Russia, because these missiles were are intended to point to Russia, they want to destroy the Kremlin. That's the headquarters of, of Russia. So Russia responded that they are also ready. Their targets are actually also targeting every city in Europe. 
So there's a rumor of war. There is tension, everything, because if they strike, Russia will retaliate and definitely there will be destruction. Not only that, only last week, I think last week on Sabbath, we witnessed um, an event where Trump was nearly shot, the running president in America. That would have sparked civil war. And the spirit of inspiration has already predicted that there, there would be a civil war in, in, in America. That would have sparked a civil war. And that civil war was going to push the Sunday law to be put into place. Therefore, we can see all the events are, are, are taking place at a very quick space. The pen of inspiration is, good, is this to say that we are standing at the threshold of the crisis of ages. In quick succession, the judgments of God will follow one after the other. Fire, floods, earthquake with war and bloodshed. This we can find this quotation in, in uh, Prophets and Kings, page 278. We know that if the world comes to an end and everybody, Christian or non-Christian, yeah. they are all looking and they can see that the world is coming to an end. And these, these developments are going to, as we have just read, they are going to take place so rapidly and we are going to be caught up if we are not ready. So we can see clearly that there is need for us to afflict our souls. Therefore, this is why I've chosen this heading tonight, Affliction of Our Souls. Affliction of Our Souls. What is the purpose of this um, service in the, in, the most, in, in the most holy place? Can somebody uh, shed light to that? What is the purpose of of, of this service which Christ is doing in the most holy place as the Tatley sisters were, sitting, were, were singing. He's looking at the books and blotting out our sins. <laughs> Amen. So this is to remove the sin, blotting out our sins. So when our sins have been blotted out, that means we'll have a perfect character. So God, this plan of salvation is not just to remove sins, is also to restore the character of men back to, to, his, to the image which God created us to be. So we see that our high priest Christ is in the most holy place. We now want to go and open our Bibles to... Um, uh, Leviticus uh, chapter 23. This is, uh, sorry, we'll start with Leviticus chapter 16, verse 30. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 30. Anyone can read for us clearly? Verse 30. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. So we see on that day, we are living in the typical days of, of uh, atonement. As we can see that the Christ, as he ascended, uh, as he went into the most holy place, and this service was done once a year. If we, we go back to that chapter, uh, Leviticus chapter 16, verse 30, we see that this service was done once a year, every year, only once it was done. And the whole purpose of this service, the priest had his part to play and the people also had a part to play. So we are looking at ourselves. What part do we play? in this service. As we know, our high priest is in the most holy place. 
So what part do we play in this, uh, in this typical day of, of uh, atonement with Christ, atonement with Christ? I'll read from verse 20, just, and when he had made an end of reconciliation to the holy place, the tabernacle of the congregation and on the altar, he shall bring the life God. Oh, sorry, not, not that one. Sorry, sorry. No, verse 29, sorry. And it shall be a statute forever unto you that in the seventh month and the tenth day of the of the of the month ye shall afflict your soul and do no work at all whether it be one of your own country or stranger or a sojourn among you for on that day shall the priest make atonement for you to cleanse you and ye may be clean from all your sins before the lord it shall be a sabbath unto you and you shall afflict your soul by a statute forever. And if we go to Le Leviticus 23, uh, verse, um, verse 27 to 29, sorry, to 30, can somebody read for, for, for us on, the, on that? Leviticus 23, yeah. 27? To, to, 20, to, to 30, yes. 27 to 30. Yes. Also, on the 10th day of this month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be an holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And you shall do no work in that same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in that same day, that same soul will I destroy from among his people. Amen. Thank you, Sister Aline. Um, affliction. You see the affliction of soul here. We are not going to concentrate on what the priest is doing, what Christ is doing right now, our high priest. We are going to, uh, to concentrate on our responsibility. What are we supposed to be doing while Christ is in the, in the most holy place, while he's blotting out these sins, while he's doing all the work of intercession? What are we? What is our responsibility? Are we just going to be sitting and waiting? You know, this concept of one saved, one saved, never, uh, not lost. That is not true. We have a work to do. So you see this, the, it's the importance of, of, of uh, afflicting the soul. What would happen to a person who did not join this affliction of soul? We are told that this person, this soul will be cut off. What is cutting off, destroyed? Another witness to that, if we open to Exodus 31 verse, verse 14, what is really cutting off? When, when the Bible says this, this soul shall be cut off, what, what happens? Uh, verse 14, you shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy to you. Everyone that defiles it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. So you see, those who were profaning the Sabbath, they were cut off, they were destroyed, they were killed. So it is with us. If we do not afflict our souls, we are going to be destroyed. It is so important. It is, it is the end of our lives. We will, we will be destroyed when, when Christ comes because we have not afflicted our souls while he is, he is still in the Holy of Holies. So affliction of souls. We see that it is because we 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 need our our sins to be cleansed out. So, what is affliction of soul? What is affliction of soul? 
I think that will be the next question. How do we, we will cover that. What is the affliction of soul? Is it easy to do the affliction of soul? How do we stop? Uh, how do we now stop uh, to sin? All those things we, we are just going to briefly look into. Okay. So how, what is affliction of soul? Can we open to uh, Lamentation 1 verse 12? Lamentation 1 verse 12. And somebody else can can be putting their finger on Ezra 8 verse, 30, verse 31. 21. Lamentation 1. Verse 12. Lamentation 1. Verse 12. Yes. Is it nothing to you, or you that pass by, behold and see if there be any sorrow like to my sorrow, which is done to me, with which the Lord has afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger? So you see, there is sorrow in affliction. There is no joy in affliction. Here, the prophet is saying, uh, is saying, there is sorrow. The Lord has afflicted me. There is sorrow. There is no joy. Therefore, when we see sin, we cannot be happy when we are afflicting our souls. When we see sin, whether it is on me or whether it is on my brother or whether it is on anyone, there is that you know, sorrow. This is why, you know, as, as Christians, we cannot afford to be looking at, at, um, at, at the television because most of the things which we see on television, you see the things which they exalt sin. They want to expose uh, people. They want, they, there's so much expo exposition of sin and we cannot enjoy seeing things like for instance the olympics i think you saw uh, some uh, you saw some clips of of uh, in the in the newspapers now the christians were were complaining about um what they were seeing on 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 the opening ceremony it was all very satanic in the they had you know they they had uh, the last Star supper uh, now represented with 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 uh, lesbians and gays, it was really a disgusting sight, and all the Christians were saying, "Look, you, this is blasphemy." And you, we know in France, being a very secular country, they've just apologized that we are trying to include to be inclusive. You know, we are a nation which is got diverse, but it's all pushing this this agenda of um of not um you know, of, of carelessness of, you know, homosexuals and lesbians and transgenders, everything. They, so they are claiming that, that, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, a diverse society, so it's, it's acceptable. But anyway, sorry. It's just a sorry, but it's a very meaningless sorry. You know, it's, it's to say, look, we really don't care. But this is because the devil now is not hiding anything from us, brothers and sisters. So these things, when you see things like that, what does it mean then for the Olympics? Of course, they are they 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 are they are pushing the agenda for Satan. All those sports activities, they are all to do with the agenda for Satan. So there is there is sorrow when we see things like that. Sorrow, and then then sorrow within and outside within. We can we can quote the example of um of uh of Jacob. How was he afflicting his soul? If we go to Genesis one verse ten, Genesis one verse ten. Uh, sorry, Genesis thirty two verse uh, verse uh, verse ten, not one verse ten. Jacob. He was I agonizing. Am... Yes, thank you. Read. Thank you. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and uh -huh. of all the truth which thou hast shown unto thy servant. For with my staff I pass over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. 
Okay, man, can you uh, please go, sister, to uh, verse 24 to 29? Of the same chapter, 24 to 29. That was, sorry, that was chapter one? No, chapter 32. Chapter 32, my apologies. This, yeah, chapter 32. 30, yeah. 29. From 29? 24 to 29. 24 to 29. Yes. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until break of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against, against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and, as, and with men hast thou prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou doest ask after my name? And he blessed him there. Amen. Thank you, Sister Aline, for, for reading that. We see in verse 10, he is seeing his unworthiness. In the time of affliction, we, we need to see unworthiness. He is saying he does not deserve these messes. We do not deserve the messes which God is giving us. He sees his unworthiness. And what does he do? He wrestles in prayer. He wrestles with, with, with the, the angel of God there until he was blessed this is the same thing which we are we, we should be doing in the time of affliction like this afflicting our souls wrestling wrestling in prayer wrestling seeing how unworthy we are sorrow for sin seeing how unworthy we are in wrestling if we go again to um Ezra 8 verse 31 let's see another element there which Ezra is bringing forth as well so when we are afflicting our souls. Ezra. Ezra 8, verse 21. Then I proclaim a fast at the river of Abba, and with that we might afflict ourselves before our God, to seek of him a right way for us, and for our little ones, and for all our substance. Amen. Do you see Ezra here? He was, they were afflicting their souls and they proclaimed a fast. So fasting is part of afflicting our soul, their souls. Why was Ezra doing this? They had a journey which was about 7, 700 to 900 miles on foot to go back to Jerusalem. To go and rebuild the temple. He could have, you know, on the way, anything could have happened to them. He could have asked for soldiers from the king, but from the king. But remember, he had said that our God is able to protect us. You can't be reckless in sin and then expect God to say, okay, he can protect us. They were afflicting their souls in prayer and fasting. Look, I've already told the king there that God, we are putting our our trust in you in this journey. We are walking for 700 miles to 900 miles from where they were to go to Jerusalem. We have put your name, God. We are afflicting our souls. We have, we have done this, Lord, for, your, for, the, for the sake, for your sake, Lord. We are here. They were afflicting their souls. So fasting, whatever it is we are going through, Fasting is, is a way of afflicting our souls as well. So when we have done that, can we say, when we are doing that, can we say this is, this is an easy way? Is it easy for us to do all these things? Praying, fasting, um, sorrow for sin, and whatever. Because once we are able to do that, that means our characters have been perfected. Let's see what uh, Sister White says about, um, about this um, afflicting of our souls. 
right. Uh, I'm a bit. Uh, oh, I would have to read from here. I don't know what. I don't know whether you can see it properly. Yes, we can. You can. Um, Sister Ali, can you read for me if you can see it? Because I don't know my computer is. Um, okay. Yeah. We are now living in the great day of atonement. In typical service, while the high priest was making the atonement for Israel, we all required to afflict their souls by repentance of sin and humiliation before God, lest they be cut off from among the people. In like manner, all who would have their names retained in the book of life should now, in the few remaining days of their probation, afflict their souls before God, in sorrow for sin and true repentance, there must be deep, faithful searching of the heart. The work mm. of preparation is an individual work. We are not saved in groups. Amen. All sins were required to afflict their souls for repentance and sin and humiliation before God. We should have sorrow for sin, true repentance, there must be deep and faithful searching of the heart. Can anyone search your heart apart from yourself? No one can do that. It's only you yourself who is able to search your own heart. That's why the spirit of inspiration, this is found in GC 489. The work of preparation is an individual work. You know, sometimes... Um, you go and say, oh, this message is beautiful. I wish this, this person was there. No, you are. it is for you, that message. It's not for anyone else except for you. You is the message has been presented. God does not make a mistake. It's for you, not for your husband, not for your child that I wish he could hear this. No, it's for you to hear. That's why you are there. So there, is, there should be deep and faithful searching of the heart. Is my heart clear? I'm, am I holding anything, Lord? So all these things, if we do them, then our characters will be perfected. But is it an easy way? How, how are we going to do this? Let's see whether it's an easy way to, to perfect our, our characters. Let's look what a pen of inspiration say. Is this easy to do? But Christ has given us no assurance that to attain perfection of character is an easy matter. A noble, all-rounded character is not inherited. Do we hear these sayings? It's not inherited. It does not come by accident. A noble character is earned by individual effort through merits and grace of Christ. God gives us the talents and powers of mind. We form the character. It is formed by hard stained battles with self. Conflict after conflict must be waged against hereditary tendencies. We shall have to criticize ourselves closely and not to allow one unfavorable trait to remain. So who criticizes? You are criticizing self closely so that not even one unfavorable trait will remain. So it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing. Let's also see Let's, let no one say, I cannot remedy my defects of character. If you come to this decision, you certainly fail to obtain everlasting life. The impossibility lies in your own will. The, you will not, then you cannot overcome. You will, if you say, I will not, if you will not, then you will not overcome. The real difficulty arises from the corruption of unsanctified heart and unwillingness to submit to the control of God. We have we have a 
we have a a role to play, my brothers and sisters, a serious role to play. I'm just going to the next quote. Remember that you never reach a higher standard than you yourself set. Then set your mark high, step by step, even though it's by painful effort, by self-denial and sacrifice. Ascend the ladder of progress. Let nothing hinder you. What does that remind you? It reminds me of Daniel and his friends. They purposed in their hearts. We have to purpose in our hearts while we are afflicting our soul to purpose in my, I'm not going to do that. I am, and then God will give us the power. But we have to make that choice and purpose in the heart. It's painful effort, painful effort, self-denial and sacrifice. This is what, what our uh, pain of inspiration is saying. It's not an easy thing to do. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me share. My computer here is uh, is doing all sorts of funny things. Sorry about that, saints. Sorry about that. Share, share. I don't know why it's it's giving two two screens. I'll be with you just now. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's better now. Oh no. Yeah. So as we continue, sorry about the the small hiccup there. So the character formed according to the divine likeness is the only treasure which we can take from this world to the new. Those who are under the instruction of Christ in the world will take every divine attainment with them to heavenly mansions. In the heavens, we, and in heaven, we are continually to improve. How important then is the development of character in this life? We can see that the development of character is is what is important. It is never difficult to do what we love to do. But to take a, a course directly against our inclination is lifting a cross. It's all part of affliction. If we are doing something which we love, we, we do it very, very easily. But to take this course is against our, our natural inclination. It's like lifting a cross. That's what the pain of inspiration is here. Christ prayed that his disciples, his disciples might be the one as he was one with the Father. This unity is credentials of Christ to the world that God sent him. When self is renowned in matters, there will be a union of believers with the Christ. This all we should pray for and work for determinedly, thus answering as far as possible the prayer of Christ for unity of the church. Now we want to say how we stop sinning. I'm sure we want to know now how do we do we achieve this? Uh, we want to go to uh, Psalms 94, verse 17. Psalms 94, verse 17. Someone to read Psalms 94, 17. Bless the Lord had been my help. My soul had almost dwelt in silence. And, and 18 as well. 
When I said my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the Yes. So what held him up when he was sleeping? Sleeping is committing sin. What held me him up is God's mercy. Let's open again in Titus 3, verse 5. Titus 3, verse 5, before we read this quote. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So it is mercy. It is mercy is the cross. Where do we find the cross here? I think there's a some somewhere which says it's where uh, the, the mercy and 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 kissed each other. Mercy, judgment and mercy. They they kissed each other. There is a psalm which says that. So the cross is the one which will prevent us from sinning. So how can the cross present us from sinning? Let's see what Sister White is saying here. The sacrifice of Christ as an atonement for sin is the great truth around which all, all truth cluster. In order to be rightly understood and appreciated, every truth in the word of God from Genesis to Revelation must be studied in the light that streams from Calvary. I present before you the great great monument of mercy, regeneration, salvation, and redemption. The Son of God lifted on the cross. This is the foundation of every discourse given by our ministers, gospel workers, this, um, page 315.2. So we are being pointed back to the cross. The cross, the cross is what Christ is uh, what uh, uh, the pen of inspiration in the Bible is. The cross is where the mercy, what is the mercy is at the cross. For us to, to be able to stop us from sinning, we need the mercy of God, which is at the cross. So what do we do? How do we do it? Look at the cross of Calvary. It is the standing pledge of boundless love and measureless mercy of the heavenly father. So how do we look at the cross? Psalms 53, how do we do it? Do we just take it? What do we do? I think a pen of inspiration has given us something here which is, um, which is quite profound. It's all taken from, from Psalms, uh, uh, sorry, from uh, Isaiah 53. It says, he was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, he was esteemed not. This chapter should be studied. It presents Christ as the Lamb of God. Those who are lifted up with pride, whose souls are filled with vanity, should look upon this picture of their Redeemer, and humble themselves in the dust. The entire chapter should be committed to what saints? To memory. The entire chapter should be committed to memory, to repeat that. Its influence will subdue and humble the soul defiled by sin, uplifted by self-exaltation. So when we commit that chapter to memory, and we are thinking, when we are committing this to our memory, we are pointed, we are pointed to Christ's suffering. We are pointed to what Christ has done. We are pointed to understand the gravity of sin. We are pointed and we will be subdued and be humbled. And everything about self falls away. That's what, that's what, is going to help us. We need to surround ourselves with scripture. We need to, to this particular chapter, the pain of insulation, the Bible commentary 
147 page, page 1147 says, we, this chapter should be committed to memory so that it is in front of us, so that when anyone does anything against us or whatever, we think about this. Why is in our memory, we think about Christ. What would have Christ done? We think about what, what he gave up for us. We think about we think about nothing else about Christ. Nothing else will matter. Once we our souls are subdued and we are humbled, we we will not be talking about book distribution because that will come natural. We will not talk about service to Christ. That will come natural because Christ now is resident. This Holy Spirit will fill us, but we need to first humble ourselves to be subdued, to be humble, afflicting our souls, prayer and fasting. In conclusion, what am I saying? What am I saying? We need to afflict our souls. What should we do to afflict our soul? We need to put away sin. How can we have sorrow for sin? We need to see the mercy of God. And where is the mercy of God clearly shown? At Calvary. What chapter should we be given? Should have we been given to deal with the suffering of the Son of God? Isaiah 53. And with those words, I would say, for us to understand the work of the high priest, we need to afflict our souls. The children of Israel were afflicting our souls, their souls. They did nothing on that day. We are not saying that we are supposed to do nothing since 1844. But whatever profession we take, we have to be in mind. How does it, how does it um, help me to afflict my soul? Anything we should wish do, how does it help me for, for Christ to be resident in my heart? Anything which we do, because Christ, the prophetic bells at the moment are ringing so loud that Christ is just about to come. When he comes, when Michael stands up, that will be the close of probation. And we also know our probation can close even tomorrow. Those who die today, the probation is closed. So this is the time to afflict our souls. With, with those few words, let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much, Lord, for your word. That we have a part in this salvation work. You are doing the greater part. And we are doing everything, Lord, here to afflict our souls. Help us to afflict our souls, Lord. Help us to make the right choices. Help us with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, to, to make those choices, to purpose, in our, to purpose in our heart that this is what we are going to be doing while Christ is, is working for us. Help us, Lord, this evening, all of us with our families. We want to be there. We want to be pointed out to say, who are those in, the, in, the, in their white robes? And they will say those are the ones who have gone through great tribulations on earth because we would have been saved. Thank you that heaven is doing everything. The host of heavens, the angels, the son of God, the father, the Holy Spirit is focused on our salvation. And we also have a part to accept that great work of salvation in our life so that Lord will be saved. Thank you for each and every family present, represented here, Lord. Thank you for giving us this time to sit at your feet. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen and amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for your message, um, Mr. Kezia. You know, the, the message of, of mercy that we need from our Father. You know, we need to be deep, deep searching of our hearts.
because this is the time and soon there will be no more time. Thank you for the, your message um, telling us that we must now search, uh, search the scriptures and, and have them in our hearts. Thank you. Um, I'm sure each and every person here um, has taken something out of this, this message. Um, now we'll have um, a song from the sisters. Thank you. Now the song I'm going to share is called Only a Look at Jesus.
Amen. Amen. Beautiful song. Only a look. Only a look at Jesus. Sister Kezia, I want to thank you. Thank you for such a beautiful um, presentation. And um, I'm going to ask Elder Turner if he can pray for us because we need prayer at this time. Elder Turner. Amen. All right, uh, let us pray. Loving Father, Lord, we have heard your word loud and clear. We are living in a time of great solemnity. A time, Father God, when we are called upon to search ourselves a time where we are supposed to experience sorrow for sin. Lord, we pray that you'll break our hearts once more again. We pray, Lord God, that you'll give us a revival, take our minds back to Calvary, and help us to behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Father, we thank you for the message that your maid servant has brought to us this evening. I pray, Lord God, that we will not just he be hearers of your word, but help us to be ready to apply those words to our lives. Father, I pray that you'll bless the saints, especially the sisters who are ministering this week. I pray that your spirit will be present, Lord, to impress each and every word and message upon our minds and our hearts. Lord, we thank you for the sentinels which you have used and are using to reach your people. Father, as we now get ready to retire, Father, we pray that we may meditate upon the words that we have just heard and allow your spirit to work in us and to bring us to that place, Lord God, where we can make a complete surrender. Father, bless us to descend and guide, continue to guide us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Thank you, Elder, for that beautiful prayer. Thank you. And thank you each and everyone um, for um, attending today. Um, I'll just give the announcement. Um, tomorrow um, at 4.45, we have morning prayers. At 5.30, we have the desire of ages. We've started a new chapter. And 12, midday prayer, 6.30, song service. And at 7, we have another timely message. And this time, it will be Sister Ingrid. So tomorrow, please return and bring your friends and anyone else. <laughs> so good night, everyone, and have a good night. Good night.